Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. This is the second episode in a three-part series on the performance impact of macOS High Sierra on an older Mac and also the implications for anyone using Windows within the bootcamp environment. In this video I will walk through the steps to do a clean install of High Sierra on this 2010 17-inch MacBook Pro. If you're interested in why I needed to do this, please watch the first video in this series called Apple Broke My Windows. The clue to the content is in the name. You can see here that this was one of the best boot times I got with High Sierra, but still 20 seconds slower than with the old Sierra, and it was normally over the one minute mark to get to this stage. It also broke the ability to boot directly back into macOS from the bootcamp control panel in Windows. More on that in part 3 of this series. So, the most interesting change in High Sierra for me was the move to the Apple File System or APFS, which promised at least some real performance improvements. Checking the compatibility page on Apple's website, it will be a relief to at least some people that machines as far back as late 2009 are supported, but I find it slightly concerning that the earliest MacBook Pro supported is mid-2010. This could mean that this is the last new version of macOS that will be officially supported on my mid-2010 MacBook Pro, which is ridiculous in my opinion. The first thing we're going to do is create a bootable USB with High Sierra. Download the macOS High Sierra installer from the App Store, which should eventually land in your Applications folder. Do not click Continue at this stage. Instead, just quit out of Install macOS. Then insert your USB flash drive, at least 8 gigs of storage, and then use Disk Utility to format that drive, making sure it's with macOS Extended Journaled. When that is complete, open Terminal and type in the Create Install Media command, which I will copy into the description of this video. Please be aware that the name of the destination volume must be the same as the name you gave to the USB when you formatted it, in this case untitled. This might take some time, so wait for Terminal to complete the command. One important step to be aware of is to make sure that you remove the bootcamp partition before formatting the system drive. Some of you may be considering keeping this, which might be an option, However, in my experience, if you decide that you wish to revert back to the previous OS from a time machine backup, Sierra will no longer be able to find this partition. Now, reboot the Mac while holding down the ALT key to boot from the USB stick. This will probably take much longer than a standard startup. Once you're in, open Disk Utility. Remember, once you do this, all your data will be wiped, so make sure you're backed up. Then erase the system drive, selecting APFS or APFS encrypted depending on your needs. Exit out of disk utility and select install macOS. This is where the bootable USB comes into its own, as the MacBook will now install High Sierra directly from the flash drive rather than having to wait for a download. Follow all the usual instructions for a fresh version of macOS. If you choose to sign in with your Apple ID, depending on your security settings, you will be sent a one-off authentication code. Then finish up with your Siri, Location and Analytics choices. So, a quick reminder of the startup times I had using the standard upgrade to macOS High Sierra without the clean install. The results I got for an early and a late version of the beta, as well as the full release, were all around the 1 minute 10 mark to the login screen. Compare that to the results I got from the clean install on exactly the same hardware. Not only did this improve the boot times compared to a standard install, it now boots in 23 seconds, a whole 7 seconds faster than the boot times I was getting with macOS Sierra, which is, finally, exactly what I was hoping for with APFS. 
That increase in performance was also reflected in artificial benchmarks, with Geekbench showing increases of around 200 for both the single and multi-core scores. So the next question is, will a clean install with the latest update of the full release fix the problems with the Windows Bootcamp startup volume? Find out in part 3. If you found this video useful, please give it a like, and if you disagree with anything I've said, you know what to do. See you in the next video.